lines of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord God, our maker. For he is God, and we are the people, and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Truly, God is calling out. You know, it is so crystal clear about how you know the God is calling out to the unrepentant, to the backslidden, for those who have just hardened their hearts. Listen to the voice of the Lord today, because tomorrow will be too late.
massage your heart a good day and you have a good lunch, a good rest, a time also of uh, prayer. And this is so important. Um, today it's a national day of prayer and uh, we want to praise God for the many hearts that have been crying out to God that the Lord will bring up all the changes that we need in our country and the changes that we need in our lives. And remember, folks, that only Jesus can save us. Talking about um, talking about prayer, three preachers sat discussing the best positions for prayer while a telephone repairman would nearby. Kneeling is best, claimed the first preacher. No, another contended, no, it's not kneeling. Kneeling is not the best posture for prayer. He said that, that I got the best results standing with my hands outstretched to heaven. That certainly is the better posture. Well, the third preacher said, well, both of you guys are wrong. The most effective prayer position is lying prostrate, face down on the floor. Well, the repairman could no longer help himself, and so he said, hey, fellas, uh, the best praying that I've ever done is hanging upside down from a telephone pole. You would agree that some of the best prayers, some of the most sincere prayers, uh, are those that when you are in real trouble. Eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, when you are in crisis, when you are in pain, when you are in a, a place that is terrible, a place that is dark, yes, you find that um, our prayers are more passionate during those times. And so in, the, in this time of crisis for the world, I know that there are many passionate prayers that are going up to heaven, praise God. And I trust that your prayer life um, indeed has been transformed and revolutionized uh, during these times. That you have found a more closeness with God. Uh, that you have found that you are more in tune with God. Uh, that you are more connected with God. That you are finding that you have a better relationship with God. Uh, where you have, a, have become more humble and you are looking at things in a different perspective. Uh, not just a material perspective. No, we are living in a material world. Um, but it has helped you to take your eyes off this world. Um, and now your focus now is on heavenly things. Uh, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I want to read to you tonight's uh, text. Uh, it's coming from the book of Jonah, we were there this morning, a command to call, Jonah chapter 3, and reading from verses 1 to verses 10. So I invite you to turn with me to the reading of God's word as we are continuing on this subject. Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through verses 10. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed their fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him and covered himself with sackcloth and sad ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast heard or flock taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackle and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. 
Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works uh, that they turned from the evil ways. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. Uh, and he did it not. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the evening's message. Today is a very special day, dear Father. It is a day of prayer, but not only that, it is also Pentecost Sunday. Praise God. And we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that we can uh, uh, come into the homes of our brothers and sisters, of our insights, ministries, dear Lord, and other churches, dear Lord, and people, fathers to all the land and even abroad. Uh, and we thank you, dear Lord God, for what you're about to do in the hearts of your people in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I just mentioned in prayer that today is also Pentecost Sunday. Yes, sir. Pentecost, we find uh, breaking up uh, and in symbols, we find the Pente, which means, uh, which means 50. That is very significant in the Bible. Goes all the way back um, um, to the Old Testament um, where seven uh, or seven years, which would be seven by seven is 49, and the 50th year is proclaimed the year of Jubilee. Praise God, all debts are canceled, slaves are gone free. Praise the Lord, property is returned back. So it's very significant uh, uh, this day of, of Pentecost. Uh, but I just want to draw your attention to a few things just before uh, we return back uh, uh, to the book uh, of, of Jonah. And speaking about Pentecost, so that you would have a little idea of what today is all about. There were 120 uh, disciples that were gathered in the upper room because Jesus told them, he said, listen, I want you to tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from an eye. He promised them that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter in John chapter 16, that the Comforter will come as he will be leaving planet Earth, the Spirit of God will come. And so the 120 assembled in the upper room, they, are, they were there for 10 days and they were there in prayer and the Bible study and, and, and other things, praise God. And so on that day, the Bible tells us um, that indeed, as promised by Jesus, because Jesus told the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verses 5, he says, John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Ghost, praise God. And it was fulfilled, as you read the Bibles in Acts chapter Two, praise God. There was the sound of a rushing mad wind that filled the house. Amen. Praise God. And they appeared unto them through the towns of fire that sat upon each and every one of them. The Bible tells us, glory to God, they received such an anointing, such power. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. I just want to make mention to you. Amen. The, the coming of, of the Spirit of God, folks, uh, is not just uh, one of power for the church, uh, but one that brings conviction as well to a lost world. As you could recall in John chapter 16 uh, and verses 8, that Jesus told the disciples that when the Comforter will come, he will reprove the world of sin. He would reprove the world of righteousness and he would reprove the world of judgment. Praise God. And folks, in these times, uh, the Spirit of God is mighty at work. On this very day, a day of prayer, of national prayer, the Spirit of God is moving mightily throughout our country, of Trinidad and Tobago, bringing deep conviction upon the hearts of the people. Conviction about there is a need to turn from sin and to turn to righteousness before the day of judgment comes, praise God. But folks, the number 120 is really significant in the Bible. There were 120 gathered in the upper room. In our text, you would read in the last chapter, Jonah chapter 4, and verses 11, and should not I spare Nineveh? 
that great city wearing a more than six four thousand spoils when it's not a hundred and twenty persons that cannot discern between the right hand and their left hand. And so in the city of Nineveh, 120,000 inhabitants uh, were, 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 were there as, as well. You also recall, I'm speaking about the significance of 120 in the Bible. You also recall the first mention about 120 is found in Genesis chapter 6 and verses 3, where the Bible says, And my spirit shall not always strive with man because of man's wickedness, because of man's rebellion, the very imagination of his heart. I uh, was only about wickedness, continually, day and night, corruption, evil, you name it, uh, that was in the heart of man. And so God said, uh, no, my spirit will not always strive. Um, his number would be what? 120. 120 years uh, a man was given to repent. Uh, that is important. I want you to hold on to these things. Maybe at a subsequent uh, a live, I might share with you more on, on these things. Uh, but it is not worthy um, to, to recognize this evening that since God created Adam to the very day, the present day that we are in, um, there has been 120 of those jubilees. Remember I mentioned to you all a jubilee, all right, it is uh, 50, it means 50. And so there has been 100, exactly 120 of those to this present day. You see how it is coming. My spirit shall not always try with man. I give him 120. So now, folks, we are at 120 jubilees in this present day. I want to draw your attention to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verses 8 at the same time. The Bible tells us that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as as one day in the sight of the Lord. You remember in the creation that there were six days that God created everything, the heavens, the earth, the man, the, uh, the, the, the trees, um, the birds, the bees, the sea, the firmament, all these things God took six days. But the Bible tells us that the seventh day that God rested. The seventh day is very significant because it represents the millennium of Christ. You see, folks, uh, as soon as Jesus comes in the second coming of Christ, uh, Folks, there will follow it uh, the 1,000 year reign of Christ, known on the earth, known as what? The millennium period. So as you look at the 120 jubilees uh, that we have spent upon planet earth, man has spent upon planet earth, uh, I am not trying, folks, to, uh, at this point in time, to pinpoint dates. I want you to understand that. Uh, I do not go there because the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. But what I am doing tonight, uh, since uh, we are celebrating the day of Pentecost, uh, folks, uh, is that uh, I want to provide for you an awareness of the times that we are living in. That's all I'm doing at this moment. I want you to understand the times that we are living in, what time it is, folks. And so with this understanding about just bringing to you the 120, as well 120 inhabitants of Nineveh, 120 on the day of, of, of uh, Garden, on the day of Pentecost, folks, you realize how it all ties in. Nothing is by chance with God. And nothing is by chance in the Bible. Everything has a purpose. Every word, every letter, every number has a purpose. Praise God. So folks, I tell you, if ever there is a time for us to bring, if ever there is a time for us to repent, if ever there are time for us um, to get out of our coldness and our indifferences um, and our backslidings, folks, uh, it is now. This is the time. This is the 120th Jubilee upon planet Earth, praise God, where God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So you see what is happening there. This morning, 
I shared with you of, on a, a man by the name of George Fullman. And so with all um, the wealth that he had then, because of his love for his nephew that was on a deathbed, and the doctor said that there was nothing more that they can do for his nephew. This man was willing to give all the money, all the money that he had, he said, fly in the best doctors, uh, give him everything because I love my, my nephew. And then he went to pray. And he poured all his heart before God. He said to God, God, I will give you all my wealth, all my earning share, if you would save my nephew. Then he went further and said, God, I will even give you my life if you would spare my nephew. And he cried out. This is what we are talking about, folks. Yes, crying out of need, of a true need, of a sincere heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember what Psalm 66 verse 18 says. If I be God in iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. As we are crying out to God all over the land, the, the prayers that are going to be answered are those that are coming from a contrite heart. Uh, those that are coming from a humble heart, uh, as those that are coming from a repentant heart. Uh, folks, I tell you, we can pray and uh, we can fast three days, we can pray and fast seven days, we can pray and fast 20 days, folks, you can pray and fast 40 days if you want them. Uh, but unless uh, you are not willing to part with your sin, uh, Unless you are not willing to part, uh, folks, with worldliness uh, and with the fleshly desires, uh, folks, uh, then uh, it will be of no use and it will be of no value. It makes no sense that I pray and fast uh, and I have ill against somebody. It makes no sense that I pray and fast, folks, uh, and I'm stealing uh, and I'm practicing extortion uh, or I am lusting uh, or I have greed in my heart or I have hate in my heart. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense. Um, this is why the prophet said, Listen, uh, rend your heart, not your garments. Um, that is something for us to consider very seriously tonight. Uh, if folks need to draw the attention of heaven and to draw the attention of God. Uh, God is not drawn by many words, folks. Um, he's not drawn even by the posture, folks. Um, what he is drawn by is a contrite and a repentant heart. Praise God. Wherever uh, there is repentance, uh, you will find that God is near. God is right there. He hears the call um, of the righteous. He hears the cry of uh, the righteous. Uh, miraculously, the next morning, after George Foreman uh, had prayed and cried his heart before God, a miracle took place. Uh, his nephew woke up, uh, and despite of what the doctor said, that he will never walk again. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and so within a few days, uh, he was able to walk, uh, he was able to talk, uh, and he was back home. It was an absolute miracle. The doctors had no explanation, but George Foreman knew uh, he knew that God had intervened. He knew that God came through, amen, for him and for his nephew. And that is what God is ready to do for you and for our country, folks. That if we are repentant of our sin, not just praying, not just fasting, folks, but repenting of our sin, not just a charade. It, not be, it should not be something only for today. I just, okay, we had a day of prayer. I did my duty, and that's the end, and I go, and I, I return to my simple ways. Um, I return to my extortion. I return to my fornication. I return uh, to my adultery. I return to my lying. I return to my oppression. Uh, folks, uh, listen, uh, it will not at all bring about any change. Uh, no, there must be a forsaking, the Bible tells us. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way. Yes, and God will have mercy and abundant mercy. Well, I want to share with you something more about George Foreman. Three months later, after this scenario, it was March 1977, George Foreman died. He died. In his locker room after fighting Jimmy Young, he collapsed in a heap 
And then we have what he described as a deep, dark, dark void, like a bottomless pit. And so in his book that he wrote, God is my Porter, a spiritual memoir, he said, I knew I was dead. And that was a heaven that I am in. He said, um, I was terrified for the place that I found myself. He said, I had no way out of that terrible place. And sorrow was beyond description that engulfed his soul. More than anyone could imagine. If you multiply, he said, every disturbing and frightening thought that you ever had during your entire lifetime, it would not even come close to the panic, to the desperation that I felt. He said, I screamed with every ounce of strength in me. I don't care if this is death. He said, I still believe in God. Instantly, what seemed to be like a giant hand reached down and snatched him out of that terrifying place. And immediately he said, I was back inside my body in the dressing room. Oh, I tell you that frightening experience, folks. Um, whether it was a vision, I do not know absolutely sure, but it was real for George Foreman. It was real as folks, he said he knew he had died. But God in his mercy, folks, uh, praise God, extended grace uh, towards this man, uh, gave him a second chance. It is like what happened to Jonah. Because remember, as I open up in, in chapter 3, the Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah when? A second time. It means to say that there was a first time that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. But when the word of the Lord came to Jonah the first time, he did not listen. Jonah ran away from God. Jonah turned, turned his back away from the Lord. Like many today, folks, are turning away from Christ. Turning away from salvation, turning away from the dark opportunity, turning away from heaven, even not realizing what they are actually doing. But thank God for second chances tonight. Praise God. I believe if I would have some testimonies this evening, if you would just open up and say, Sister, Brother, testify, there will be so many testifying of those second chances. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe you can write us and, and, and share with us a second chance that you had from the Lord that can bless the people today. Glory to God. A time that you fell away. A time that you backslid. A time that you turned away from God. You went back into the world. You went back into sin. But God in His mercy and His grace gave you a second chance. Glory to God. Thank God for second chances. Praise the Lord. But folks, do not take those things for granted. Because the God is not like the lotto. You can have chances after chances after chances. The Bible tells us after death, there is no repentance. You see, folks. So don't play Russian rule, as I mentioned in a broadcast before. All right, do not play Russian roulette with your soul, folks. You just do not know when would be the last chance that you might have. And so. With that experience, folks, um, he accepted Jesus Christ, officially accepted Jesus as his Savior. And he devoted himself thereafter to being a true follower and a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, George Foreman, in his experiences um, with his nephew, his experiences, um, his personal experience with death itself, um, he came to this realization that a man like him, that possessed so much of money, he realized uh, that his money was absolutely worthless in the next life. Um, he realized a man like him, with power, he, come, he came to the understanding, it was absolutely worthless in the next life. Um, he realized as a man of prestige, uh, that it was worthless in the next life. Um, I want to say this, folks, and I humbly say this, uh, folks, and it doesn't matter what hat that you wear upon planet. Listen to me very carefully. There are many hats that a person could wear. 
But those hats will be, have to be taken off at death. I want, to, want you to know that. It will be taken off at death. It doesn't matter what hat that you might wear. You might have titles, folks, in this world. All kinds of titles. You have to drop it off. You have to take off that hat at death. I want to warn you folks. Hell does not know presence. Hell does not know prime ministers. Hell does not know kings. Hell does not know queens. Hell does not know millionaires. Hell does not know billionaires. Hell does not know educators. Hell does not know medical doctors. Hell does not know scientists. Hell does not know politicians. Hell does not know priests, no pundit folks. No, in hell you are just another lost sinner that will remain there forever and ever and ever and ever. You do not have a pass because of the hat that you wear upon time. I say it again, folks. You do not have a pass because you have status in life, because you have title in life. You do not have a pass because of that. Hell will swallow you up. As I'm speaking today, I share with you about Nebuchadnezzar. I share with you about Belshazzar, his grandson. These are both great men that rule empires. Folks, oh, but without Christ, they are another lost soul in a Christless eternity. And so, folks, tonight, I want to encourage you, regardless of who you are, it's time to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that God will exalt you. It is time to repent and turn from your wicked ways as we are seeing in the book of Nineveh. Nineveh was a wicked, wicked, wicked city, folks. You wonder why the 40 days was pronounced upon them. They were given 40 days to repent. 40 days to turn from their wickedness. You wonder why such a short time? Folks, it is because they had them all their life to turn from their sin. But they were such a wicked people. They were such a cruel people. They treated people so badly. When they captured people and brought them as slaves, they would tie them in the sun to be dried out. They were the most cruel and but um, barbaric pers uh, persons upon the planet Earth. I mean, let me tell you something. What they did to their prisoners was unbelievable. The cruelty of these people. And they knew it. They knew it, they knew it, they knew it. Uh, inside of the city of Nineveh, it was just like Sodom and Gomorrah. It was no different. Uh, the idolatry folks uh, was great. Uh, yes, uh, there was so much uh, wickedness uh, going on in that city. And God gave them ample time to repent. Uh, like God has given the world to thee, folks. Yes. And God has given you a uh, but you see, God finally came and said, uh, the handwriting was on the wall. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm drawing the line, the plummet line. I, I have the plummet line. Yes, I've used the measuring rod upon this nation. And I found them wanting. So I'm going to give them 40 days to repent. I'm going to give them 40 days to make up their mind whether they're going to turn from their sin or to continue in it. But the Bible tells us, I tell you, it is amazing, praise God. When Jonah landed up upon the shore of Nineveh, the second time as God recommissioned him, and as Jonah went to that city, and he preached, and he said, 40 days time, and this city is going to be overthrown. When the people heard the preaching of Jonah, the Bible tells us it was brought to the king himself. And so the king, so convicted, the Bible says, they believed God. They believe the preaching of Jonah. Isn't that incredible? And yet today, folks, we have the preaching of the gospel of Christ throughout the length and breadth of our twin island. And uh, there are yet so many people that have not turned to Jesus Christ, uh, folks. Uh, and that is really sad. Uh, this, this people that were given over to such cruelty and evil, they turned from their wickedness, they repent of their skin. Uh, 
And so the king himself put on sackcloth and ashes uh, and repented. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that the intention uh, that God had, uh, he did not bring it upon never. Because why? Because the people repented of their sin. Praise God. And so folks, uh, this man, the heavyweight champion of the world, he went on to be the heavyweight champion of the world. On two occasions, he was ordained as an evangelist in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, George Foreman, and became the pastor of a small church um, and became involved in the prison and the hospital ministries. Praise God. And God has used him in a mighty way. That is what we are talking about power. That's what we are talking about a God um, who cannot fail and a God who will not fail and a God that will never fail, praise God. I want to say that God's primary objective, God's primary goal on earth um, is to bring earth to heaven. That is why he sent Jesus 2,000 years ago. God came to earth, Christ came to earth uh, so that earth could get to heaven, praise God. Jesus came to save man from impending destruction. Nineveh was facing impending destruction in word of common. It came upon Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't it folks? Fire and brimstone came. It came upon the people of the day of, of Noah's time. Did it come? It did come folks. Yes, it came. And there's also judgment that is coming up right ahead of us. Judgment folks, that is so severe and terrible. If you think this is bad upon planet Earth, all you are seeing is a smoke. The fire is up ahead and time is gone, folks. Time is gone. Where are you? God has just given us a little time out as it were. He said, time is gone, but I'm giving you a little break. I'm giving you a little break. We do not know when that break and God will resume his time clock as prophesied in Daniel chapter 9. Praise God. But God sent, uh, as the Lord sent Jesus, um, God sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh. Jonah means dove. Um, a picture of God's grace. Um, a picture of God's mercy. The Bible says Jonah was the son of Amittai. We always, most people pronounce it Amatai, but in the Hebrew is Amatai, and uh, it means my truth. I see this is so wonderful because it reminds me of who Jesus is. Um, Jesus, when he was baptized of dove, amen. Praise God, was seen as it were. The Spirit of God, like a dove, um, descended upon Jesus, amen. And furthermore, Jesus declared himself to be the truth. Uh, the Lord commissioned Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh. Why? Because Nineveh needed saving folks. Uh, like this world needs saving. God sent Jonah then. But God has sent Jesus to us. Uh, this world, praise God. Friends, uh, when are you going to repent? When are you going to return to the Lord? I trust that you do it now before it is too late. Would you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this most powerful word that has gone forth today on this day of prayer and, this, and also the day of Pentecost, dear Father. Two times into one. Glory to God. The Spirit of the Lord came at me upon the believers, amen, and they were baptized with the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, your word is very clear, that all believers in Christ, saved and blood washed, according to 1 Corinthians 12, verses 13, for we are all baptized, yes, by the Spirit, into one body, the body of Jesus Christ, praise God. For the Spirit of God, on this day of many cause, came also not to baptize the believers into the body of Christ, but to convict this world of their sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Today, he continues his great work upon time earth, bringing conviction, but what men repent. The conviction is there so that repentance will follow. Father, there are many, even though convicted, they are still hurting their hearts. Dear Lord, 
They are still tearing a blind eye in their power. There are many believers who have been convicted about sin and disobedience and forsaking the things of the Lord. There are many church people who have abandoned the house of the Lord too often, time and time again, to go out to the beach and the rivers. Now God just closed it down and shut it up. Many of them have left their houses to go, God house to go to other houses, to go to theaters and movie town and this thing, and God shut that as well to their, their Lord. Many have forsaken the house of the Lord and have gone shopping all over the place. God shut that down as well to their God. What you are saying, I will have no idols, your Lord. But with the people under that conviction, would they turn to the Lord? Father, you're not only speaking to this lost world, but you're speaking to a church that needs to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. You're speaking to our people, dear Lord. You're coming for a church that is without spot and without wrinkle. And as we look at the church today, it is much to be desired. So much of divisions in the church, dear Lord God. So much of self in the church. And people building their own kingdoms all over the place. Father, rather than thinking about building the kingdom of God, there's a lot of wrinkles and there's a lot of spots that need their Lord to be dealt with, their Father God. And so, Lord, in your wisdom, dear Lord, that you are purifying not only Israel, today it's not only for Israel, but it's for the church as well, too, that the church is being purified with the true bride. Amen. Glory to God is getting ready. Getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, amen, for the marriage. For that great and grand marriage, praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, I just continue to pray for our country. Dear Lord, it is sad to see, dear Father, that the doors of our churches are locked. We never thought that a day like that will come. What a sad, sad day it is, dear Lord. Only you can open up the doors. Only you, not man. Only you can open up the doors, dear Father. Because you set up kings. In the book of Daniel, it is clear. You set up kings and you put them down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just pray, dear Father, amen. Glory to God that these doors will be opened soon in your timing, dear Father. And it will be, dear Lord, to your praise and to your honor and to your glory, dear Lord. Meanwhile, we pray that you strengthen the saints, dear Lord. Praise God, your faith will not fail. They will not become cold, dear Father, in Jesus' name, but that will stay strong and faithful. And this is what is required during the times of trial. Whether we will stay strong and faithful or whether we will turn away. It will all depend upon if we have a true relationship with God. If our connection with God is real, it was just a shock. It was just a show. This is a time of sifting. The sifting their Lord. The sheep from the goats. The tares from the wheat. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise and honor and glory. For hearing our prayer, saving our nation. Supply the needs, dear Lord God, of your children today. Dear Father, by extension, this world, keep us until Christ comes. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you as I hand back to Anna, who is going to close tonight. God's name on Wednesday. Uh, Lord Terry, we will be back here uh, for our Wednesday night live. And I want to encourage you to share today's broadcast. Very powerful, anointed, dynamic, relevant. Please share it with everyone. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good night to you as I have done.